everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Katie, and today we're going to talk about April books. April really surprised me with this because I went and did my reading journal, printed all of the sticker covers, and realized that I read nothing but Christian fiction this month. So normally I have like a mixture of secular fiction, Christian fiction, a middle grade. It was like, it was none. That's all I read this month. And that's okay. It was a good month. I had nothing less than three stars, which is great. I have my reading journal over here that I printed out all my book covers on. So let's go ahead and go through like how many star ratings since everything was Christian fiction. I don't have to do that. There was one YA book and then the rest were adult fiction. So that's not bad. So I have one three star. I have four three and a half stars. And then I have seven four stars and two five stars and one six star. So we did get a six star this month. I don't know if you know what it already is. I've talked about it before in other videos, I think. Don't quote me. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So another big surprise is I have most of them physically. So that was that was fantastic. Okay, so the first one that was three stars. Take a, oh, of course, it's at the bottom of the pile. Can't be at the top. I didn't organize these. But my three star was, I'm sad to say, Lady Jane Disappears by Sarah Davidson Palatano. I still liked it, but like I had such... Honestly, such high expectations after the high that I got from The Lost Melody by the same author. that I was just like, I like I knew I was going to love this one. And then it just didn't hit me as much. And it has nothing like, it has nothing to do with like, oh, like, I was expecting this to be five stars and it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't. But like, I always go into my books like, expecting to give it five stars. Like, there's no difference. Like, I'm hoping every book is a five star. But this one, unfortunately, was only three stars. It took me a little while to get into. I did enjoy it the more the story went on. It just personally was more of a family type drama story and not so much what I thought was going to be more of a mystery. It was a little bit of a mystery, but not as much as I was hoping for. So this one we're following Orly and Orly, her father passes away and he was writing these uh, serial stories for a magazine. And so they're called Lady Jane Disappears. And so she takes over her father's writing and goes to her ancestor's home to try to figure out what happened to the real Lady Jane because trying to find out who this woman was, where is she now, did she pass away, is she still around? So she's trying to hunt for the woman as well as keep on writing. And so she ends up writing about her family into those stories. So the family's trying to figure out okay, who's writing these stories about us. So it was good, but I'm not a huge family drama story fan. And that's why it only got three stars, but it was pretty good. I did like the mystery aspect of it. And I did like the second half more than the first half. Okay, so on to three and a half stars. I'll go ahead and do the two or the three that I don't have physically. Uh, I just finished buddy reading. I think it was, was it last night or the, or the night before? Might have been the night before. My friend Oshina and I buddy read Bryn and Sebastian Hate, Hate Each Other by Bethany Turner. And I think we we had similar feelings about this book. Um, we usually do have fairly similar feelings most of the time. A lot of the times when we buddy read, though, we usually just give it average ratings. So this one was kind of an average rating, three and a half stars. It was okay. And I did like the redemption arc for our main character, Bryn. Uh, Bryn is a, um, like an anchor woman and she has been doing news reports. She does celebrity reports and stuff. Well, one day her, um, she hasn't realized that they're still live on air. And she, so she talks bad about her old hometown. And so the hometown is like really getting on the back of her pro producers. And, you know, like, she's like, oh no, like, what do I do now? So she's tasked to actually film a segment in her old hometown making amends. And so as I was reading this, like, I literally saw a Hallmark movie this winter and I can't remember what it was called. I did enjoy it, but it was very reminiscent of this book. 
and I definitely think the movie came out before the book I'm pretty sure but I was like wow this is like s such a similar storyline but um yeah Bryn is a character like you don't really you don't like her in the beginning but you've come to find out like why she was so not necessarily hostile but she was cold to her hometown and I can understand where she was coming from you know so um I didn't really like the romance all that much I felt like it was kind of a forced romance not too much but a little bit it, it was it was pretty good um as far as like the last half of the book went but it did feel more cheesy hallmarky um definitely was <laughs> definitely a similar storyline but I did still like it and I definitely will be reading more of her books because I my favorite book is still Plot Twist by Bethany Turner still my favorite book by her to this day and I have one more on my cart that I hope to read soon so I will pick up more of her books and there is actually a second book coming out with char side characters from this book, I think. And I'm actually more interested in that book than this book. Okay, the next one, I read a cozy mystery starter book. It's called Case of the Bayfront Murder. It's a macaroni on wheels cozy mystery series. It's a Christian, Rome, uh, Christian mystery series. And it's about this catering company that uh, is, a, is an Italian catering company and so they cater to around the city in California well they go to a catering event and the the, um, the owner of the catering business ends up finding the body of their client and so uh, uh, they pretty much form like a scooby-doo type of scenario and uh, like it was the girls it really wasn't the guy at the catering company that really was involved but the two girls kind of get involved with the mystery and they're trying to solve it on their own and there's this of course a cute cop and there's also a cute friend so there's kind of like a love triangle going on not really a love triangle because she was hurt by a guy years ago and so she's unsure about what love really feels like so uh, as the mysteries go on I'm sure she'll figure out like who the guy is for her so we shall see I, I like both guys. I think they're I think they're fine. So we'll just see. Anyways, so uh, the mystery honestly was pretty easy to solve. That's why I only gave it three and a half stars. Um, it's like it was super easy. I honestly thought there was gonna be a twist that it wasn't who I thought it was gonna be. But then I was like, oh, it was who I, who it was gonna be. So it's more of a follow follow the characters along as they solve it versus like you can try to solve it yourselves type of case if you know what I mean. So I was more invested in the characters than I was the mystery, but it was, it was still pretty good and I would be interested to read the next one, which reminds me, I have to put this on my series tracker list. I did read another Christmas book. I think this is my last Christmas book, don't quote me, but actually there could be one more <laughs> that I want to get to uh, this year, but I did finish um, another Christmas book. I know, who am I? I'm just trying to finish series that I, I've already started, so that's my excuse. But I read Somehow This Christmas by Teresa Tysinger, and I gave this one three and a half stars too. It was pretty cute. Uh, I really liked our main character. She is a bride-to-be, so this is like not like a, um, a, um, it's not a like romance where like you start from the beginning and you work your way. No, like she's ready to get married, and but all of these chaotic things happen. She's actually a wedding planner. And so she's planning her own wedding, but then all of these catastrophes happen. She has no idea what to do, you know. She starts to become a little bit of a bridezilla, not terribly, honestly. I mean, it's understandable with what she went through. She went through a lot, but just her the chaotic mess of going on and her fiancé, you know, trying to do the best he can as well. And so it was pretty good. I enjoyed it, and I have one more in that series, so I am, I'm so close to being done. Okay, so the last three and a half star book that I have is A Noble Scheme by Rosanna M. White. I did enjoy this one, but I still really loved the first one even more. And I, I'm really excited for the third one because the third one's going to be about the brother in this group of, um, of imposters. And I'm just so excited to read that one. So this one we're following Gemma and Graham. And we get to find out why they separated in the first book. I did text Rosanna and I said, is it what I think it is? Like, there's literally like, you know nothing about the relationship between Gemma and and Graham in the first book. Like, nothing. Like, you just know they're angry at each other and they're separated. And so you've come to find out what really happened to them 
why they're so angry at each other. And I really loved the faith in this story. I loved that, you know, they both had to learn to forgive each other, to ask God for forgiveness. And I really liked that part of the story a lot. And I did, I do really like the mysteries in this. I like just kind of like the whole imposter feel, seeing, seeing the characters like dress up as different um, personas and going into high society as different characters and stuff. And that's probably my favorite part of these stories. Okay, now we can go on to four stars. So I think the rest of the books I have physically, oh, except I don't have two. I don't have two books. And the other one's downstairs. <laughs> All right, so let's see. So I finished this book, which was the Beyond the Book Box YA pick for March, but I got it in April. And that's Fire and Grace by Melissa Plants. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it four stars. This is about um, two sisters, and they've been living with their aunt. They're pretty much say half their life maybe a little bit more because their mother unfortunately what had an addiction to drugs and so um their aunt pretty much says I'll take them into my home and so their aunt ends up passing away and their mother comes back to get them well her, her mother is clean from drugs which is wonderful but she's with this very highly suspicious man who may or may not be the leader of a cult and so and it's Christian fiction. I really enjoyed it. There's also some mermaid type magic things going on, but they're gifts from God, which I think is really cool. Um, it does have to deal with kind of like, um, you know, the good versus evil demons and stuff. And But it was done in a way where like, I didn't feel like it was like super scary or anything, but it was very, very good, very well done. And yeah, I would definitely try another book by this author. And it was nice and short, so it didn't take me too long to read it. The next four star I gave was to The Divine Proverb of Strussel by Sarah Brunswold. I did really enjoy this one, not as much as her first book, but still really enjoyable. I was honestly here for the, for the uncle-niece relationship. I just felt like that was just such wonderfully done. We don't see a lot of relationships that are like that in books. Like, I can't think of another one, can you? But I just, I really like the relationship. So in this one, we're following a girl named Nikki. And, and Nikki is really shaken up by her parents' divorce. And so, and her father is getting remarried and everything. And so she ends up running off to her grandmother's old farm where her uncle lives. And so she's kind of trying to figure out where she belongs, you know, what's going on with her relationship with her boyfriend. And so she's kind of on this journey to kind of find out a little bit more about her family and everything. And I was here for the uncle story. Like, honestly, I would love a story just on her uncle. I really liked his story. I really liked how, how like, he was so introverted, but he was so sweet and so kind to help her out. And, yeah, I just, I really liked their relationship. And there's def definitely a lot of German recipes as Nikki finds uh, a German recipe book, which I think is lots of fun. So she sees that and ends up talking to the townspeople a little bit more about finding out about her her grandmother, um, who her father really was, you know, trying to find out why, why he abandoned their family pretty much. And so, yeah, it was pretty good. I did enjoy it. So I gave that one four stars. Next four star was The Ark and the Dove by Jill Eileen Smith. Uh, quite a few of these I did book reviews for, so I will link those down below if you want to see, like, my full thoughts. I don't talk about, like, them completely in this video or I try not to because you know you can always check it out but The Ark and the Dove by Jill Eileen Smith is her newest release this is a uh Noah's Ark uh not really retelling but biblical fiction but we're following his wife Zara and we're following them before the before the flood and try and trying to build the ark trying to find, you know, um, a wife for their last son before they end up going in the ark because God said, you know, you got to bring you, your sons, and their wives. And so they had to find a wife for one of their sons. And we kind of see um, how different plots end up kind of following the biblical timeline and seeing going from the flood to a couple other things that happened after the flood. And so I really love how Jill Eileen Smith kind of connects different stories in the Bible into a, a great storyline. I feel like she does a fantastic job at that. So I really enjoyed this one. I really liked it. The next one was the buddy read for the spring in, no, no, Shower Me With Flowers readathon. I changed the name this year. <laughs> but uh, that, 
The buddy read was What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson. I left my copy downstairs, but um, I know I was going to forget one book. But uh, we had a lovely conversation with the author. I'll try to remember to link that down below as well. But we just had so much fun. She was so kind and so sweet to come on my channel and talk about her book. And thank you to everyone who showed up for that. Really appreciate you all um, in the comments and uh, asking questions and supporting the video. So thank you for everyone who did that. But it was a good book. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, it's about a woman who she is a podcaster and I believe she used to be like some kind of detective. Well, she's now a podcaster dealing with um, grief stories and the hope after grief. And so she just recently found out she had no idea she was best friends with this one girl when she was younger when she used to visit her grandmother well she tried to contact her as the years went on never heard a response so she figured you know like i just lost a friend like i can't get into contact with her we'll come to find out years later that her best friend went, went missing they have no idea what happened to her it was a cold case they never found her and so her best friend's sister ends up contacting her and saying, you know, I want you to solve the case. My mom is still still suffering even after, I think it's been like 20 years um, after this. And she's still suffering from the from that event. And I just want closure for my mom. So she ends up going back to her grandmother's town and her grandmother's home to try to figure out what happened to her. And uh, it's definitely a little bit heartbreaking, but there's also hope and faith interweaved through, through it all. And uh, everyone seemed to love it. I honestly don't think I've heard anybody give it less than four or five stars. So I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. And even if you didn't get give it that high of a rating, that's okay too. Not not every book's for every reader. All right, then the next one that I gave four stars is Love in Tandem by Becca Kinzer. I actually got this from the author. I was so excited when she texted me. She was like, do you want to be on my unofficial launch team? Because she didn't have one. And I was like, like, are you kidding, Becca? Absolutely. Like, I love you. So I got this. I gave it four stars. Really enjoyed it. I love her. I love her banter between characters and the humor and just, she does a good job at like bringing lighthearted moments. And then there's like some moments that hit you a little bit harder, but it was still really, really good. So in this one, we're following a girl who, um, she's battling a failed engagement that happened last year and so uh, her fiance is actually marrying his brother's old girlfriend so they're like you know they're so it's all this whole situation going on and she's also gonna lose her job as a music instructor because um, it's losing funding and so there's this like rich wealthy guy who's like has this like plot every year to give away money and there's one where a couple has to go on a tandem bike ride for like I think it's like 500 miles or something and they'll get the money after that and so um she's not going to do it or whatever but then she ends up running into the man Zach who is the her fian her ex-fiance's brother they end up running into each other and that's probably my favorite scene is them running into each other at the um, bridal shower just the whole scenario on how she ended up being there how they met and stuff it just was such a fun meet cute and it had me laughing I was actually I think I was reading this at a silent book club so I was like oh no uh, or no no it was during reading sprints here and I was like oh no like like, I'm just going to laugh at this. And it was cute and funny. And we find both of them, how they get into the tandem uh, race and stuff. And it's cute. It's not quite an enemies to lovers. It's more of like a strangers to lovers. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting combination. But, um, like, not complete strangers. But they're also not friends either. So, it was interesting. And I, I like her romances. They're so sweet and fun. So, yeah. Then I read Hunting for Love by Casey Lane, and this was a book that was on my um, list to read for my TBR game. Thankfully, I did find a copy, and I actually own this book. So on my Kindle, I was like, oh, good, I actually own it. So I read it. I gave it four stars. Really enjoyed it. I actually had a good time with it. Um, it might even be closer to five stars, honestly. I really did like this one. So this is actually my first Casey Lane book, and... I don't know if she's a Christian author. It was clean 
And I think the male main character, he was Christian. So I'm guessing it was Christian fiction. But um, we're following this girl and she is a, a corporate woman in Atlanta, Georgia. And her father is the owner of this big company. Well, she um, helps to get she helps to get contracts and stuff from other companies for their business. I think they're like like a publicist business type of thing. Well, she, her father tasks her to go to this little little rink dink town, and she's like, like I want nothing to do to do with this. But her father's like, listen, if you're going to take over my business one day, you have to work with all contacts, no matter what background they're in. So she ends up going there, and she ends up going to this gorgeous like. Um, lodge in the middle of nowhere and she's like wow what is this doing here like it's not like a you know small log cabin or anything no this is a gorgeous lodge and so she ends up running into this guy and he's like definitely the the huntsman you know um, outdoors type and you know it's definitely an enemy that's definitely an enemy to lover story but I really like that one I thought it was really nice and sweet um, I think the only reason I didn't didn't give it five stars was because there was definitely a miscommunication happening um closer to the end of the story it was resolved but I was like oh like I really don't like miscommunication because it's like if you just talk to each other like what you think you overheard really wasn't what happened and so it's like ugh, I hate when that happens so that's probably the only reason why I didn't give it five stars but I did enjoy the whole story I loved both of the characters I thought they were great together and it was a lot of fun Okay, now we're going into our five-star read. So I read If the Boot Fits by Karen Whitmire. Loved this one. Loved this one so much more than the first one, even though I think I gave the first book four or five stars too. But this one was just so much better. It's a Cinderella retelling set in Texas. And it's about this girl named Samantha and this man named Eli and, or no, it's her father, Eli. Asher. Asher is the boy. But Asher... Um, crashes into this ball and he sneaks in to get some evidence on what happened to his family's farm. And so he ends up escaping and leaving. He's being chased. Well, Samantha's brother ends up falling into the lake trying to chase down Eli. And Eli comes and saves him, and, but leaves a boot behind. <laughs> and so she's trying to figure out where the boot belongs to. There's a mystery going on. She is involved with dangerous things happening. Like, why are all these dangerous things happening to her personally and you know it's just it was a good time I really enjoyed it loved the characters uh enjoyed the side characters too so it was a really great time my last five star read was set in stone by Kimberly Woodhouse this is the second book in the treasures of the earth series this one was so much more loved than the first book um I felt like there was so much more on the art on the um paleontology side than the first book and the mystery in this one, Kim had me going so bad with this book. I I thought it was somebody for like the longest time. I'm like, it's got to be that person. It's got to be that person. And she just blew me out of the water with, with that ending. I was like, I was so in shock. I texted her. I did a whole video I sent to her. And I was like, I literally told her I wanted to slap her. Kindly, though. I sent like a little um, gif of a little kitty that in somebody's face but <laughs> but like just that ending was a um, real like shock ending and so I was like you know sorry for the spoiler about there being a shock ending but there was and I just I couldn't believe it and I was like I don't think a book has surprised me this much in it in a very 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 long time so I, I loved it I actually did forget to talk about a three and a half star <laughs> I'm like I had one more book in my lap I'm like why is this in my lap? I thought I talked about this. I did not. Uh, that is A Lady's Guide to Marbles and Misadventures by Angela Bell. I gave this one three and a half stars. I did like it, uh, it but it just took me a little bit longer to get into it and enjoy it. Uh, this is about a girl named Clara and her ex-fiance has um, pretty much degraded her family. Um, her family's a little bit crazy. And so he kind of plays that and like, kind of blows it up out of proportion and like, you know, tries to get them committed, you know, pretty much. And so her, is it her grandfather, I think, or her father, her father. No, it's her grandfather. Her grandfather um, ends up hiring this man as a clock um, protege. 
And so, but then one day her grandfather goes missing. And so she's like, I have no idea where he is. He flew off in his big owl machine. So it's got that steampunk feel, all these mechanical creatures and stuff. So it was very, very um, fantastical, but like no like magic magic. It was like Mary Poppins, but it was more like he created these mechanical creatures and stuff that moved and stuff like that. And it was really fun. I definitely had a lot more fun during the last half because we got more of those mechanical creatures and this adventure of her and the guy going off on this journey to try to find her father or her grandfather as well as her mother went along. I loved her mother. She was great. But yeah, it was a good time. I did enjoy it. Uh, it just took me a little longer to get into it. Okay, so now we can talk about the only six star I had for the month of April. And that was, which I'm so happy, I got a very, very, very early copy. Like, this book doesn't even come out until, like, fall, winter? I don't know. But I, I got to read Hope Like Wildflowers by Pepper Basham. And let me tell you, for those of you who are waiting for this book to come out, it is worth the wait, I will tell you. It is so good. And I just, I loved it. It was great. I loved the, the relationship between the two characters. I loved, I love the faith, the faith content. Oh, the faith content in this series is so good. Especially this third book. Um, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, this is the third book in the um, Blue Ridge, or what is it called? Anyways, so this is the the do, uh, the sister of the first girl in the first book, Laurel's sister, Kizzy. And we get to find out what happened to her because pretty much she's only mentioned in book one and two. She's like, you know, she's the non-existent sister because she was kicked out um, from her farm. And so we get to see her story and um, and I just, I loved it. And it was six stars all the way. The faith, as I said, was one, probably one of my favorite faith and redemption stories I've ever read. It was just so beautiful and you know I'm not going to say much about it. I did share a review on my Instagram and on Goodreads but I will be talking about it probably more when it's closer to the release date but just so you know I think you're going to really enjoy it when it comes out. Uh, so yeah that was great. So these are the books that I have. It was a blue month. Look at all those blue books. I mean, not too many blue books, but most of the pile is blue. But those are the books that I read for April. I'm in May right now. I think my brain's still in March. But anyways, I think it was a really great month. Let me know what you read. Um, oh yeah, I did forget to share how I did in my readathon. One second. So for my shower, Me With Flowers readathon, I actually did complete the entire readathon. I did every single prompt, which I loved. I'm so happy that I got to complete all the prompts. So uh, for a character who is royalty, I actually ended up counting What Happens Next by Christina Suzanne Nelson because we're all, we're all daughters of the king or sons of the king. So technically that makes us royalty and that's why I counted it. So that was a stretch, but I literally read nothing with royalty in that last month. So I counted it. So if you read a book that was Christian fiction, it counts. Okay. So uh, then for the next one, a book with a married couple, I read A Noble Scheme by Rosanna M. White. For a book with a wedding, I read Somehow This Christmas by Teresa Tysinger. For a Fortune 400 or a character who is wealthy and in society, I read If the Boot Fits by Karen Whitmire. For a character who is heartless or a villain, I read Set in Stone by Kimberly Woodhouse. For a character that goes on an adventure, I read A Lady's Guide to Marvels and Misadventures by Angela Bell. For a mother-daughter or a mother-son story, I mean, it could, you could, that could go in any direction. You can do a, uh, a father-daughter story or a father-son story too or, or anything like that. I read Fire and Grace by Melissa Plants. For Read a Romance, I read Love in Tandem by Becca Kinzer. For a flawed character, I read The Divine Proverb of, Stru the Divine Proverb of Strusel by Sarah Brunswold. And for a hero who doesn't claim to be one, I read Hope Like Wildflower Flowers by Pepper Basham. So I didn't complete all the prompts, one book each. I still can't believe I did that. I honestly felt like I wasn't going to complete it, but I did. So yay. If you combine prompts, that's totally fine, you know. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna have you combine prompts though for the for the readathon in October. So that one's a little bit, I wouldn't say tougher, but you do have to read one book per prompt. But 
it, that one's a lot of fun and everybody everybody seems to enjoy that one if you're new to my channel stay tuned for october it's going to be really 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 fun all right so i hope you all have a wonderful day again let me know what you read if you read anything amazing and you are dying to tell me about it if you read something lousy tell me about that too in the comments all right so i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you all in the next video